Hello and welcome to another ASC Productions video. Today we are going to be doing an upgrade on this Lenovo T520. Now this laptop is one that I've had for a number of years, pushing four or five years now. Uh, I purchased it and ended up giving it to my mother who needed a good replacement laptop. Uh, the laptop she had been using was an Acer, I believe. She had been using it for a number of years, and it had died on her. So I bought this for her, used at the time. And it's been a great computer for her, but she's recently retired and wanted something thinner, lighter, and more powerful. So I got her a an X250, which she now absolutely loves, which is significantly smaller than this uh, and significantly lighter. This sucker is a beast of a laptop to have to carry around. Uh, but just because... Uh, I've upgraded her does not mean that this computer is anywhere near the end of its life. It has 12 gigs of RAM, a 1 4 gig and 1 8 gig DIMM, uh, and it has a second gen Core i5 2520, which is a, let me see here, a 2520 is a 2.5 to 3.1 gigahertz, 512k byte of cache, 3 megabytes of level 2 cache. And it's a 35 watt TDP, and I had that same lap, that same processor in another an HP uh, laptop, and I upgraded that to a 2720, and it worked flawlessly. Um, it did run a little bit warmer than it did before, but when I went shopping to see if I can find another uh, 2720, uh, they were too expensive, and so I found instead a. Uh, let's see here, a 2760. Now this only shows as a 50% um, a chance of upgrade compatibility. So we're going to see if this works. This was half the price of a 2720, uh, the one or two that I actually found. Here is the actual chip. I'm going to have to clean it up. I'll clean it up at the same time I clean up uh, the processor that's in here. And yeah, let's get going. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to go ahead and time-lapse this a little bit so you don't have to listen to me breathe. I've had a lot of comments about me breathing in these videos. So let's get going. Oh, and this has an SSHD. So it's not quite an SSD speed, but it gives you a terabyte. It's actually a fairly nice drive.
All right, so we now have the CPU cooler more or less free to us. Let's see what's going on here. All right, so there we go. That is now free. We're going to clean up the thermal paste. There's a couple of thermal pads for the VRAM. We'll be very careful about those. We'll get this CPU out of here. Let's just double check and make sure the new one physically fits. I don't expect it not to, but always important to check. Zero force insertion is an important thing. Because last chip I bought had a couple of bent pins, but it was packaged terribly. This actually has been packaged very nicely. Now, where's the triangle? Shoot. Don't drop it. Looks like that's the side with the triangle. There we go. It was. Alright, and if we go back around, it is now inserted. So, let's go ahead and we'll pause here for just a minute. I'm going to go get, you see how much bigger that CPU die is than the old one. It's a huge difference between the two. All right, I'm going to get some uh, cleaning supplies and we will be back in a few moments. Alright, so we've cleaned off the thermal paste, off the chip and off the heat sink. I'll apply some new stuff. Now when I remove the old stuff, I like to just rub it off as much as I can with uh, um, uh, with a dry uh, Q-tip, because that way it um, I get off a lot of it and it, and it just clumps together. Um, when you start using the rubby alcohol, it, it cleans it off, but then it kind of sticks to everything. So I find it easier to do it that way. Alrighty, let's see if we can get this back on without too much fuss. It really was tight in here.
Now, unfortunately, this panel's cracked, which makes me a little sad, but it is what it is on that front. It's not worth buying a new one because it's out of the place, out of the way, and if you didn't know it wasn't already cracked, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't know. I'm not too worried about it. You know what I didn't do? I did not plug. I'm an idiot. I know what I didn't do. I didn't plug in the fan for the heatsink. Well, at least I only got this far, right? And that should just be the keyboard removed. Which I think is just these two screws. Yep, I did not do that. Unfortunately, it's just the two screws to remedy this. There we go. Oof, crisis averted. That would have been pretty ugly uh, when we go to power on and the temperature sh shot through the roof. But I realize that now.
I think there's some juice in that battery. Let's uh, see if we can't turn it on and get it to work. Put it down here. And the moment of truth. Hey! Interrupt the Think Vantage button. So what I had to do with the HP is I had to uninstall the drive, excuse me, the old CPU. Let's see if we have to do that on this one. Nope, man, we're frozen. Let's go ahead and shut this off. Let's go into the uh, BIOS to make sure it's fully recognized there. Uh, F1. Get a better camera angle here. All right, core i7 2760QM. There we go, which is a four-core, eight-thread processor. All right, let's uh, F10 this. Let's see if Windows boots this time. Oh man, it has a spinning drive, and so I haven't heard that noise in a long time. It's probably one reason why it's taking so long to boot. And we're up, so I'm going to go ahead, pause here for a moment. I'm going to download some uh, performance benchmark stuff, and we'll uh, see what we got going on the system. We'll be back in a few. All right, so I actually didn't have to uh, do any uninstalling of the old CPU drivers. It actually recognized it perfectly fine uh, after a reboot. So very happy with that. Uh, this is definitely a worthwhile upgrade CPU wise because it definitely works on this laptop. Um, I did run the Passmark performance test. It failed on the 3D graphics mark because it couldn't run the op uh, OpenGL. Uh, we're going to see if it will run on Cinemench. I don't know if that's because the CPU is out of, or excuse me, the GPU is so old. It's a, let's see here. It is an NVS4200M. I'm going to download. I thought I had the latest drivers, but I'm going to download the um, latest drivers and rerun the test here in a little bit. And then the disk mark also fell flat on its taste, face, being that it's an SSHD versus an SSD. So slightly faster than spinning media, but not by much. So if I were to run this test a few more times, I'm sure it would actually speed up the disk performance because it would move more of the performance test onto the um, SSD portion of that drive. But I think what I really need to do is just save up and buy an SSD for this computer because um, <laughs> it's just too slow without one. Um, let's see here. The, so the 3D graphics marks, like I said, failed, but the CPU mark, I mean, just look at that 4737.6, 4700.6. That is very quick. I'm very happy with the score. Memory mark is definitely up there as well. Of course, it is running 12 gigs of DDR3 memory. So I may up that to um, 16 gigs. We'll see. It depends on what I decide what I'm going to do with this. I haven't made a decision on what I'm going to be doing with this system at this point. Um, I may set it up to run um, virtual machines so my wife can use something to, if she has like weird websites she wants to open, she can do it there instead of on her desktop. Uh, but let's go ahead and run Cinebench. Let's see if this uh, runs here. You got all eight threads going. That This is, this is pretty quick for an, an older machine. So if you have an old T520, oh, that's the other thing. This is actually running fairly cool um, the fan even with running the uh, performance test you know the fan does speed up slightly but it is not 
pumping out a ton of heat. It's not uncomfortably warm at all in any way, shape, or form. It's quite happy to run this CPU. Um, so, yeah, let's see how long this takes here. I think this might even complete the test faster than my brand new to me uh, 25th anniversary laptop because again that's only a dual core 4 thread versus a 4 core 8 thread processor so uh, just doubling up the cores really makes a big difference score of 344. Obviously this doesn't hold a candle to a brand new um, you know 8th gen Core i7 processor but if you're on a budget and you need a decent performing machine um, now this is a laptop I already owned and I'm just upgrading the CPU but I'll do some maths, um, but I bet you could purchase this laptop, put at least 8 gigs of RAM into it, upgrade the CPU, and put an SSD in it, into it for less than $250. And if you need a powerhouse machine, $250 for a machine that can really crunch numbers, video editing, light gaming, uh, good web browsing experience, uh, you know, things like that, if you need to do you know, even some CAD 3D sort of stuff, this laptop could tackle that. Uh, obviously, it's not the latest, greatest, it won't be as fast, but, you know, you're not paying for the latest and greatest. So, anyways, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to answer those. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.